and it seems to be live. And so, class, people, we're at chapter 21.1, and Jen is going to start translating. Okay. <clears throat> so, so, but at a certain time, when St. Brendan had celebrated the holiday of St. Peter the Apostle in his ship, they found um, a sea so clear that they could see whatever was below it. Mm -hmm. uh, and when they had looked um, within into the deep, they saw different types of beasts lying um, above the sand. Mm -hmm. um, also, it seemed to them that um, they should be able to touch them, the beasts, with their hand because of the excessive clarity of that sea. Um, for there were um, thing they there were things like um, herds lying in pastures. Yes. Um, on account of the um, of this such multitude, um, they were seeming like a city in a um, circle, mm -hmm. uh, winding their heads, lying to the rear. Yes, right, sticking their heads on their tails or their rears by in, in the process of lying, in lying, right? And I honestly don't, I assume that means that lots of little animals are curled up in little circles. And in fact, if I could pick Sister up, I could give you an example. She's kind of like that mm -hmm. right now. Um, so that is how, I think that all makes a certain amount of sense as a story. Uh, and I take it that the, the, assemble, the assemblage of them, there are lots and lots of these creatures, so much that they, that the whole group of them looks like a city in a circle, right? So there's one big circle of lots of little circular mm -hmm. creatures, which is, you can see why somebody might have suggested jellyfish, but that's... Yeah, that, uh, that makes a certain amount of sense. It's kind of, it's sort of clever. I think I've said more than once that this reminds me of my favorite scene in The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, where Lucy's look, I haven't checked, but where Lucy's looking out of the boat as they get mm -hmm. close, close to the end of the world, and she's cities underneath the water because the water's so clear. Mm -hmm. um, little, little small creatures. Um, on a more Latinate note, Jen, could you tell us more because Bruce and I need your help on Potuissant and the fact, why is it pluperfect? It seemed to them that they could have, have touched could have. Have no. Could had been able, you know? Yeah, I, I think I said that they should have been able. Um, uh huh. But that's. There's a lot but, of. But we're not counterfactual. Well, there's. I mean, in general, there's a lot of pluperfect subjunctives in this text that I don't think should be. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. I kind of thought this was another one. But um, they're so much fun. They sound so fun. I understand why the author uses them. I mean, it's, it's possible that it could be representing some kind of. Um, Oratio obliqua, and then a mm -hmm. a um, subordinate clause, and then you would have right a subjunctive that it's. it's but it's a, not that, right? Mm, no. <laughs> right. I mean, it would have to be a virtual or subordinate clause. It would have to be a vir subordinate clause in virtual oratio obliqua. Yeah. Right. If you were, or you, or else it's just bad grammar. And and it's also I mean it's a quad clause that's the sub that's really the subject of that wide bot or it seemed to them that wow. yeah and so because of that I because that's not how you would say that in no. classical Latin so I think that was kind of maybe where that subjunctive's coming from and then I'm, all right we're glad you're puzzled too <laughs> that, that makes us feel better um, I mean I think in fact it makes perfect sense intuitively that they could have touched would be in the pluperfect subjunctive. 
but it's just hard to make it fit the grammar book. Yeah, I mean, it's it's certainly not how Cicero would say it. Okay, good. I, I didn't think so either, but... Yeah. <laughs> and you just said, yeah. why the heck is it patuus and pluperfect? Yes. Uh, and, uh, and I think the answer is, again, yeah, this is... This is just post. This is this is post classical usage, which right. I, I have to say does not mean it's bad usage. I it's know. just meaning to put it in 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 Jen's terms. It's just not what Cicero would have done. We know we all of our good and bad words are in quotation marks. It's okay. We're being virtually. Different. But you keep using them anyway. I know. Well, it's shorthand. You're right. We should get more multicultural in our Latin judgments. The last frontier of political correctness. In a way, that's where the original description of Latin comes from. Anyway, it is descriptive, but it's descriptive of a very narrow subset of Latin. Right. So it's descriptive of classical Latin, which we define to mean you know, Latin for the first century and, you know, a whole bunch of things that we do to it. But, you know, that, it's not like somebody wrote those rules and then Latin doesn't match. Someone looked at Latin, wrote the rule, and then other Latin doesn't match. Right. Right. Exactly. And, I mean, Cicero is actually, when you think about it, quite late. I mean, we, we're we aware we don't we have mostly fragments um, from more than a century or two before B.C., um, but we're well aware that there was a thriving literary tradition before Cicero, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also, I mean, a lot of it was a military language earlier back, so one could see Cicero's contemporaries might have considered him a bit flowery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, except that there is this phenomenon with Latin that I don't know of anywhere else, that with Cicero in prose and Virgil and Horace... In poetry, they kind of, they were kind of instant classics, right? People in their own lifetime recognized them. They said, "This mm -hmm. is as good as it gets." Mm -hmm. so, well, know, well wasn't, wasn't that actually kind of the idea with Virgil that Augustus kind of said, "This is going to be the Roman classic," and it was. Well, mm -hmm. but it wasn't I mean, of course, be, because because he was a genius, but wasn't that kind of why he was gotten to write the things so that they could have a Roman classic that was all their own? Well, that was, yes, but I don't think that's why it was an instant classic. I think Virgil somehow hit this, kind of got mm -hmm. the tone right somehow. I don't know. Anyway, this is way off topic. Mm -hmm. yeah. but, that, but that was kind of what he was asked to do, and he did it because he was a genius. Yes. But it doesn't, it doesn't mean necessarily that the way he was speaking Latin in any way more... I don't know. More, more, more legitimate. Analysis. Because Ennius had done kind of the same thing a few generations back, and we do have right. a handful right. of of Ennius, and yeah. his language is quite different. Mm -hmm. and, you know, if you, if you, and there's nothing linguistically that would say you should use Virgil's Latin as opposed to the way someone like Ennius was speaking. Right. right. And also, if you think about it in terms of travel log, Caesar might be a bigger influence on Brendan. Mm -hmm. so, you know, yes. Caesar's actually, you know, his civil wars and, and the Gallic Wars, he's actually traveling to these places. Right. You know, I don't know how much Caesar, Virgil that's a whole other question, what, what Brendan was reading or what Brendan, what text Brendan was aware of. I think yeah. Virgil, is, yeah. Virgil is certainly the prime candidate. I'm not sure Caesar is. In fact, I don't know that people read Caesar very much in the Middle Ages. Yeah. Um, well, when, pretty well known. Yeah. Okay. When, when uh, did he when did he come into fashion as like the universal beginner's text? When that, was that? Was that like English public education? Yeah, well, English public school education. I think mm -hmm. you know the, the thought was it was even true when I was when I was a child. The thought was that schoolboys would like Caesar and Xenophon mm -hmm. about battles, and that's what boys mm -hmm. are interested in. And also fairly easy grammar. Caesar's right. Not a real involved writer. Right. So it's hard to down for schools. Anyway, class, I think we should go on. Probably. <laughs> Rather than discuss the entire <laughs> history of the Latin language. <laughs> um, at least not without, I, I'm not prepared to do that without preparation.
<laughs> Jen, okay. Oxford, 21.2. So the brothers were asking the Venerable Father that he um, celebrate his Mass with silence, but we would say in silence, yes. uh, so that the beasts wouldn't hear and wouldn't um, raise themselves up to pursue them. Good. The Holy Father um, laughed at them and was saying to them, um, I'm really amazed at your um, foolishness. Why are you afraid of these beasts? And why uh, weren't you afraid of all the beasts, of the devourer of all the beasts of the sea, the devourer and the master of all the beasts of the sea? Mm -hmm. You sitting and singing psalms many times on his back. Yes. Um, you may rather, in fact, you um, cut down a forest and you kindled a fire, and you cooked meat. So why are you afraid of these beasts? Mm -hmm. um, surely God, uh, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ, is the... Is, so sh surely God um, is the Lord of all the beasts, Jesus Christ, uh, who is able to... Um, uh, bring all the animals low. Uh, sorry, what did you say at the very end? I think my... To bring, like, <coughs> really all right, to like bring them down low to... Right, right. Yeah, hum right. Hum humble all the, all the animals, right. all the living creatures. Yes, good. Yep, good. great. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure I get the logic exactly. Well, he's, he's saying that our God, who's protecting us, is the God of all the beasts who made them all and can bring mm -hmm. them low, so why are you scared of the jellyfish? <laughs> or whatever. Or, or why are you scared of anything if you aren't scared of that well, enormous... That Jasconius, yes. Yeah, that Jasconius. Right. Right. Well, Jasconius turned out okay. It doesn't mean every creature is safe. Mm-hmm. But they were actually but, on the whale. Uh, Here they're just you, but looking you, at them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if, you and, think, but if you think that Jasconius is the master and the swallower of all the other beasts, then... Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, get it. I, think it's, I think it's a brilliant way of actually sort of bringing the, the story back in full circle. You know, it sort of manages to, keep the, to, to bring that theme back in again. Um... Uh, all right, great. Uh, thank you, Jen. Um, Jenny, Thanks, Jen. You yep. ready for number for twenty one point three? That would be me. All right. Cum hic dixi set when he had said this, chepit cantare in quantum potuit altius. He began to sing as loudly as he could. I'm giving that loudly and not as high, but yep. because loudly makes a lot. Yeah, no, yeah, that's good. Ceteri namque ex fratribus aspiciabant semper bestias, but um, for the rest of the brothers were continually or were always looking at the creatures, the beasts. Mm -hmm. Cum autem audicent bestia vocem canentis, but when the beasts had heard the voice of the one singing, yeah. levaverunt se a terra, et natabant in circuitu navis, they lifted themselves up from the earth, presumably the bottom of the sea, mm -hmm. and swam and were swimming around the boat, swimming in a circle around the boat. Ita mm -hmm. non potuisent fratres ultra videre in omni parte, so that the brothers could not have seen past in any direction, pre multitudine diversarum natantium, <clears throat> on account of the multitude of various swimming creatures. Tom yeah. and non? Uh, hmm? Yeah, the, the ultra, I, I think what it's getting at is, well, here's another potuiscent. This is the same mm -hmm. problem we mm -hmm. had before, and we've saw, we've, we have or haven't solved it to mm -hmm. our satisfaction. I think... Uh, the, the brothers were not 
able to see any further. In other words, they, they, these creatures were, were sort of making such a tide or mm -hmm. such waves, they couldn't see ultra, they couldn't see any further right. than where the circle of the beast was. Yeah. But they couldn't see beyond. Right. Um, Tamen non apropinquabant naviculae, nevertheless they did not approach the little boat, or they were not approaching the little boat, said longe late que natavant, but were swimming far and wide, et ita huc aque iluc, and thus here and there, donec vir de finicent misam, and um, when, this is roughly when at this point, uh, or until. Until. Until the man of God had finished the mass, seretinevant, mm -hmm. they they retired. They they went back. No. Well, did, did they, they, no, no. This is that they stayed until. Yeah, they, 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 yeah, right. They kept themselves in place. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Post hic, after this, quasi fugiendo, as if fleeing, omnes bestiae, all the creatures per diversas semitas oceani through various is this waves or parts? Halves. 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 Various halves, mm -hmm. various sections we might say of the ah. ocean. It really is. It's pathways. It's uh, mm -hmm. track path. Uh, oh, paths. I thought you said halves. No, no, no paths. Ath. Okay, through various paths of the ocean, afacia servorum de natavant. Swim through various paths of the ocean away from the face of the servants of God. Good. Sanctus vera brandanus per octo dies prospero vento et velis extensis vix potuit mare clarum transmeare. But St. Brendan, through eight days, or for eight days, with, um, a, with a favorable wind and sails extended, could hardly do something to the clear sea. Yeah, I'm sorry, cross, I, I just, I just it. got... You could hardly cross, cross mm -hmm. the clear sea. Clear that sea. doesn't make a lot of sense. If he's got a favoring wind and sails extended, why is he hardly able to cross it? Are the I, retreating beasts that's, making waves? That's probably it. Or just it's a really, really big clear sea. Yeah. I, I guess you could take cross in that way, like finish getting across. Yeah, that makes yeah, sense. No, I think that it, oh, I see. What, you know, I think it is that's transmeo. So meo Yeah, 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 yeah. It means yeah. travel. Transmeare is to travel across. So it does mean to make it to the end, to make it across. Right, uh, so that makes sense. That, that's showing just how, how large it is then. Right. I think it's as simple as that, right? Even though there was a favorable wind, they couldn't make it in eight day, even in eight days. That could, they couldn't make it. Right. <laughs> William. Yes. Or, or, or somebody, this semi, uh, a semi to Okia, uh, Okiani, that, that's a standard classical. You talk about pathways over the sea, right? Mm -hmm. Standard classical poetic. Didn't strike me as odd. Yeah, uh, they, that, that doesn't prove it, anything there. It, it struck me as slightly odd that I thought maybe I was being anti-Semitic. Well, it? How would? Oh, no, it's a terrible joke. It's a terrible. It's a dreadful joke. That, and it's going to be there for the rest of eternity, yeah. or until well, the internet collapses. Whose fault is that? Right, I don't know. Professor's bad joke goes viral. <laughs> um, um, all right, great. Uh, Jamie, 22.1. I like Quadam, this. Quadam zero die, but on a certain day, cum celebrasent misas, when they had celebrated masses, a paruit ilis columna, there appeared to them a column in mare, in the ocean, or in the sea, et non longe ab ilis videbatur. And it seemed to be not far from them, said non poterant ante tres dies apropinquare. But they couldn't get to it um, till after three days. They couldn't get to it before three days had passed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cum autem apropinquaset, but when they had drawn near, Verdei, the man of God, 
Yeah, no, 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 be, be, be yes, careful. Yes, yes. When, when the man of God had drawn near, Aspiciabat hmm? sumitatim ilius, he looked for, here he was looking for the top of it, tamen minime potuit, but he couldn't, that is, couldn't find it, pre, or, but, but he hardly could, or he, he actually, this is he, he could, not at all, pre altitudine ilius, on account of the height of it, the height of it. Hmm? Namque alcior erat quam aer, for it was higher than the air, or we would say than the atmosphere. Coro coperta fuit ex raro conopeo, and it was covered in thin net. Yep. That is random. That's really odd. Okay, in tantum rarus erat, it was so loose knit or loose woven, ut navis posset transire, that a ship could go per foramina ilius, through the holes of it. <coughs> Ignorabant, they did not know de qua creatura, from what creature, by what creature, factus esset conopeus, the net was made. Habeba colorem argenti, it had the color of silver, said tamen durior ilis videbatur quam mamor, marmor, but nevertheless it seemed harder to them than marble. Columna erat de cristallo clarissimo. The column was of the clearest crystal. Good. Right. Good. Um, I, I wondered, de qua creatura, um, I, I, I think Jamie is, is right, at least She's certainly justified in taking it that way. By what who, what creature has made this thing? But I it it seems to me that really what the text wants to say is they didn't know what the what this canopy was made out of. You know what whether creatura can mean material. Oh, what mm -hmm. what created thing? Mm -hmm. Like hmm. because they talk about you know they say well it's this it's got the color of silver but it's harder than than. Um, than marble. So I just wondered whether anyone could think of, of an example of creatura meaning substance or something. I mean, obviously, I should just go look it up. Um, otherwise, I think we have to stick. I, th I think we should stick with Jamie's translation because creatura certainly should mean creature, right? Anyway, that's all I got. Well, can it be? Can it mean any? I, I don't know. Can it mean any created thing? How how broadly could we understand it? I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking it up. Sorry, I got kicked for a few moments. I'm back. In, in Jerome, um, in, in the Vulgate, it means creation. The, right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Like the or, material creation. Like create all of creation. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, creation. so like from what of all creation? Yeah, like uh, yeah, creation. Yeah. Well, that's kind of that kind of get, almost manages to mean both things at the same time. Mm -hmm. Although it's not, although it's not by whom what creation it was created, but out of what creation. Right. It was but created. you know, if if it were like a spider, you could say it came out of the spider. You know. It was made from right. the body of the spider. Yes. Right. <laughs> and uh, and I don't see and I don't see any reason why they would be assuming that it is made by some animal or organism, some creature in the sense of. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. I agree. I I'm just saying, I think that is literally what you're trying to. I have. Yeah. What, Bruce? Somebody said something. Well, if I have the foggiest idea what this actually was right. describing, I might know better. Do you think it's maybe the iceberg? It's as I thought of this thing kind of as an iceberg. I think every, maybe, that's what people think. People, yeah. think, I think it's it's with everything else. It's a it's a it's a garbled, exaggerated, misunderstood. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want, if you're trying to rationalize it anyway, right? A garbled, misunderstood, exoticized. Story about an iceberg. Right. But but where does this net thing come from? I mean, I don't even see where you would get that unless it was like fog or something that looked like a, a veil from a long way away. 
or else if the yeah. iceberg yeah. itself yeah. has sort of problem. openings in it that they're sailing through, you know. Right. Yes, that that would explain the silver color and the hardest marble. Mm -hmm. Right. So I don't know. Maybe we're overthinking this. Right. I mean, I think you have to imagine one story going to some. You know, it's it's like that game of that mm -hmm. was the telephone where you say mm -hmm. something to one person and the other person says it and then the other person says it. And all you need is, once you're one step away from somebody who's never seen an iceberg, then wow. all sorts of things can start happening. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, tense. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can see that happening even, like, within a family. Like, there's a, you know, like a family story. You can see it being passed down from older siblings to younger siblings. And the younger sibling tells it, and the older sibling's like, what? <laughs> that never happened. Right. It gets more exciting as it gets... Older, yes. gets older and further with, with completely honest intentions. Is right. The thing. Right. I don't think that necessarily exhausts the possibility of this of this story because clearly the whole measuring the entrance ways and stuff seems remarkably specific. Mm -hmm. um, so there there's many things I don't really understand about it, but um, right. but it's a great story. Uh, thank you, Jamie. Thanks, um, Jamie. I was. Um, I was looking at the, Bruce, what you mentioned about the Samata Okeani. Um, there isn't, there aren't any results in Perseus for that as a phrase. Um, I didn't, then I got distracted by Creatura. But um, definitely, like, they occur in the same passages, but never actually as a phrase like that. Okay. So I was, I, and then I, I was going to start looking at other words, but as I said, got distracted. Thank you. But it, it, but did it did it strike you the way it struck William and me? Is it something you might have seen before? Mm -hmm. um, it nothing comes to mind from classical literature that I would translate that way. Pathways of the ocean, which is how you train, or pathways of the sea. When you said it in English, it sounded like a phrase. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I was I was wondering if it was like an English phrase or a biblical phrase or. I wonder if from Old English you have the sea is always referred to as like the swan road or the whale road. So maybe that's why it doesn't sound strange to me. Hmm. Yeah. It, it sounded strange to me in Latin. I didn't even really know the word semita, but <clears throat> it seemed to make sense to me in English. It seemed like something you would say in English. Mm -hmm. yeah, semita same, same does occur in Virgil. Um, mm -hmm. it, it definitely in some of the AP selections for the Aeneid, but yeah. not with the ocean. Hmm. It's very poetic. It's very pretty. It's, the, it's used of the Hellespont as the pathway that joins Europe and Asia. But that, that makes pretty literal sense. It keeps, keeps Europe from joining Europe and Asia. But yes, right, I agree. It's, uh, it is a pathway. Right. Mm -hmm. Never mind. Uh, also, I, I mean, just in general, thinking about movement of, of people and goods, uh, it's all it's all faster over the ocean than it is over land until the invention of the railroad. Mm -hmm. So yeah. It, it, People think of, say, the English Channel is this barrier between the continent and and uh, England. Nonsense. Uh, it was much easier to get there than it was to get to, you know, central France from Normandy. Mm -hmm. right. It's only a barrier for really large bodies of foot soldiers, mostly. Right. They can expect to be repelled upon landing. Right. Well, it can be very dangerous, but it's fast. It's a trade-off. Right. You know, you're trading exactly. off that when you want to get somewhere with your stuff, you, the merchant, you know, if you want to go fastest, you go by sea, but mm -hmm. you're more likely to lose your stuff than if you went over land. And it, it costs it more. It is more dangerous. It, it's kind of like what we could, what we would say about air travel today. Mm -hmm. It's that in and um, it, not in this time, but well, we don't have the records for this time. But later on. When we have records for it from the 12th or 13th century on, they have things called ship loans, which have higher rates of interest, but mm -hmm. you can make more money from them in terms of when you're shipping goods and you need a loan, and you're mm -hmm. and you're you're sending them by the ship, and that's because the risk is higher, but it's going to get there faster. 
Cool. Okay. Let's move. I, I don't even want to think about air travel. I, I like to think of it as safer than driving. Um, all right. Chapter 22.2. Bert, you ready for this? Yeah. Brendan said... Sorry, your voice has cut out, and so has your image. Yeah, he's frozen. Hello? Bird, mm -hmm. are you back? Mm -hmm. Hello? Yes, we hear you, but we don't see you. Okay. Now we see you as well. Now okay. we see you too. Okay, good. So he said, um, he said, put the oars inside the boat and the masts and the sails. And some others of you, um, meanwhile, hold the meshes of the net. Good. For um, the aforesaid net had a great space in all part in all parts from the column mm -hmm. about one mile. Good. And thus it extended into the deep. Good. Okay. But when they had done this, the man of God said to them, send the boat in through one of the holes, the third certain hole, yep. so that we might diligently look at the greatness of our creator. Good. The great, the right, the magnalia, the, the great deeds. Great are. deeds, yeah. Right. Good. And when and had looked around here and there, the sea appeared um, on account of its clarity to such a degree that they were able to see everything which was underneath. Yes. For the foundations, they were able to, to look at the foundations of the column. And similarly, the, um, the surface of the net lying on the ground. And the light of the sun was not less, was no less inside as it was outside. Good. The, the, Good. the sumitatem has to be something here like I think we would just call it the end, or we would even say the bottom of the net. Yeah. Right, lying on the ground. They they can so they can see all the way. The water is so clear that they can see where the net goes onto the 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 ocean floor. Um. So sumitatem. I I'm not sure if I've got glossed that. Yeah. Here. I've, yeah. You bottom did. edge. Good. At least I glossed that. Um. Of the net. Um. It is a really weird very specific description of this, you know, unbelievable uh, situation. Um, it's kind of hard. I mean, you, it's, it's, it's one place where I can easily imagine this becoming, you know, either a cartoon movie or a, a real movie. You know, this is where, this is where Hollywood would do a really CGI. good... CGI. Um, I'm sorry, what? I said CGI. CGI, exactly. Um... Um, but you can imagine the voyages of Brendan being quite a popular film, maybe. I don't know. With you know charismatic cartoon characters with famous actors doing the voices. I don't know. Um, I think I, I have a feeling. I keep thinking of that Ice Age movie. Um, I think that's what's what's corrupting my brain. Anyway, I'll shut up and let. Bert, go on. 22.3. All right. Um, then St. Brendan was measuring one of the four sides of the opening of the net, I guess we'll go with. Uh-huh. And it was four cubits in all parts. Right. I guess he, hold it. Before we go on, I get, it, don't you think he's measuring one opening... Of the four 
the four sides of the net? So are the, I mean, this thing is kind of like a, a, a an obelisk or something like with that. An obelisk, right, with an obelisk with a tent, with four sides of a tent coming away. So it's like a pyramid, really. Yeah, okay. Right? And so he's measuring one of the openings of those four sides of the pyramid. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. hmm. At least that's what I think. And if Karen Ruff were here rather than swanning around with her in her monastery, we'd have an expert, but maybe she'll weigh in later on when she comes back. Um, she knows more about this than anybody I know. What this, um, sort, of, what this sort of reminds me of is kind of like the... Uh, in the in the Old Testament, sort of the, the description of building the tent of meeting, like sort of all the weird dimensions and the different uh, mm -hmm. types of fabric mm -hmm. and stuff. The tent of meeting. In in the Bible, yeah, the, there are very uh, specific the, yeah, the, dimensions. The, the tabernacle. The tabernacle, right? Yeah. Uh, I haven't given the tabernacle a lot of thought. Especially since they find the chalice and oops, did I spoil it? Oh yeah, no. And the patent and stuff. Well, that'll keep them coming back to the last session. Right. Anything to do with chalices gets gets a big audience. It gets big, big people, big big share of the audience. Right. By the way, there are all of six people watching us on YouTube. I know, I know. Uh, well, this is fame. A full half dozen. I know. It's I. Nobody went in. Nobody goes into medieval Latin for the glory. <laughs> That's a fair, a fair claim. That's more than we had two weeks ago. Right. That's true. Uh, okay. So, so all our panic moments about that just went out to the entire internet. Maybe slightly misplaced, as the entire internet doesn't appear to show the slightest interest. I know, but if they look, if they pick up on Bruce's bad joke, <laughs> and change in a in a heartbeat, right? That's how life is. Anyway, Bert, 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 continue. Uh, let's see. All right. Uh, therefore, they were sailing through the whole day next to one side of that column, and um, and, and through the shadow of the sun, they were able to see through the shadow. So they were. They, through the shadow of the sun, they were still able to feel the... Try taking the sun through with Caloran. The through, through the shadow, shadow they, they were able to see the seat, heat of the sun. Okay, yeah, I like that better. Right. And, and so it went up until night. Good. And so the man of God himself was always measuring from the side. Good. And uh, the measure of one side, or the measure is one of the four sides of that column is 1,400 feet. Uh, what the yeah. 1400 cubits. Right. So, so, so with a, um, so one of those sides had the measurement of 1400 cubits. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, and so, and so, Four four day period. Oh, okay. Yeah. Through the four day period, the uh, venerable father uh, did that among the four angles of the four sides of the four side tower. Yeah, yeah. literally the four corners, but yeah. So it's as if they're in the they're on the inside of a hollow space, 
and it takes four days to go all the way around, right? Does that sound right? right? Yeah. I'm not getting the mental image of this at all, but that's probably because I'm not very good at spatial visualization from verbal descriptions. Well, think about a pyramid, a very big pyramid, made out of mes with made out of a really wide mesh net rather than stone, mm -hmm. and a, wide enough that a, a boat could actually go through it. And then once you go through it, you sail on all four sides mm -hmm. to measure the extent of the pyramid. Hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, okay. one reason people get excited by this image, this, this passage, other than the fact that it's very strange, is that you get a sense of how big the boat was, because mm -hmm. we're we're told the measurements of the hole in the net. So it gives you a sense of, you get a little piece of nautical archaeology, maritime archaeology information. And if it's only six feet wide, and how long could it be to be six feet wide? Because I am having issues visualizing 30-some monks fitting into a boat that's six feet wide. Now, at this point, I think we have 15 monks. Yeah. We have 13 plus St. Brendan plus the last of the three latecomers, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Now, it's not, uh, all that said, it's not a lot of space. Sure. Yes, but, but I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think this boat is more than 15 feet long. Right. But they are monks. So right. Yeah. They can be expected to handle a certain amount of discomfort. <laughs> well, that's good, because... They're getting it. They're getting it, right. Good. Right, that's great. Thank, thank, thank you, Bert. Bert. I, I think that was particularly nasty yeah. stuff to make any sense all of. All that math. It's all, <laughs> it's math all. in Latin is the worst. <laughs> in medieval Latin. Not to like belabor the numbers further, but if the sides... So is, is the whole pyramid like each side 700 yards long? Is that... Is that what that measurement is? I think so. So the so the whole thing so like each side is seven hundred yards. Why is it taking them an entire day? They're not that, going very fast. I mean, what like you're measuring very carefully. They're measuring carefully. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it sounds like he's doing it with like a yardstick or something. Yeah. It seems to me a more fundamental question. I'm not not that your question isn't a great question, Jen. Um, but, but but the real question, my question, I should say, is why <laughs> why Brendan is measuring anyway? Why is he interested? Who he's cares? curious, I guess. I mean, why? I know he sure is curious. But what is he? What is he? Some now some kind of of med of, of of Atlantic Ocean geographer measuring guy? He hasn't cared. Hasn't measured anything else. Right? He doesn't even know where these damn islands are. He doesn't know whether they're north or south, barely. Um, so suddenly he's measuring. That's what I think it has to do with the tabernacle. I agree. I think that's. I think, and I'm sure. Yeah. I, I think that your 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 mentality seems very appropriately. No, I think that's dead right. It's got to be. It's, it's got to be something with all. You know. Yeah. This many cubits and that many cubits. Right. Yes. Right. Which, of course, does work instinctively for us, intuitively for us. Anytime anybody starts talking cubits, we think Old Testament, right? Mm -hmm. uh, right. You know, you can't even say the word cubit without thinking mm -hmm. in Old Testament. Well, what would have been the usual unit of measurement in, say, an insular Latin text of this era? Would it have been the cubit or would it have been something else? It would have been feet, surely. Th that's what I would think. So, so... That would indicate that cubits, probably Brendan is thinking of the Old Testament or his writer is thinking of the Old Testament writer as well. Is, right? That's the trouble. It could be right. the writer. But either way, I, I, I'll just have to go back yeah. to the tabernacle right. passages to see if it works, if that, if that works. Right. Um, uh, um, all right, great. Um, who wants to volunteer for 22.4? Can I volunteer? Sure. I'm just warning, I haven't looked at this at all. Okay. So real, that's, authentic site translation. That's very yes. exciting. That's why we're on the public internet, right? That's right. Quarto autem die, but on the fourth day, in venerunt calicem de genere conopei, there came 
a is this the chalice we yep. were talking about? There came or they they found they, they found, found they they a, discovered they, right. they discovered a chalice of the type of the net that is made of the same stuff as the net. Yep. Right. Et patenam de colore columne yacentes. Okay, I don't know what patenam is at all. I don't know the word. Yeah. <laughs> It, 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 it's a patena. It's a little. It's a little. It's a little ritual plate. We've got okay. the. We've got the 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 two vessels. Oh, I see. The the, these are the here. vessels for communion. Okay. Yeah. It's a separate and a, a platter. Would, could we say platter? Uh -huh. there, it's actually called a paten. A p a t e n. Okay. Right. Okay, and a paten of the color of the column. Yacentis in quadam fenestra, lying in a certain window or opening in latere columnae in the side of the column contra austrum, towards the south. Que statim vascula sanctus Brindanus apprehendit. Um, Saint Brendan immediately took up these vessels, dicen, saying, Dominus noster uh, Jesus uh, Christus. Uh. Our Lord Jesus Christ, ostendit nobis hoc miraculum, shows us this miracle et and ut ostendatur multis ad credendum in order that it may be shown to many that they may believe, Miki dedit ista bina munera, um, has given me this pair of rewards. Good. Statem percepit vir dei. Immediately, or just, or just gifts. Right, even. these, this pair of gifts. Yeah, okay. yeah, the, the yeah that makes gifts. more sense. Um, but isn't bina more like pair than just two? Well, bina is two each. I think this is what Karen was talking about a few weeks ago when she mentioned that um, in insular Latin, the distributive numbers are often used in place of the regular numbers. In straight, in straight yeah. This shouldn't okay. be. Because there's only two of them total, and it's only being given to one person. Yeah. So it's yeah. Th so this is really standing in for duos, isn't it? Okay. So these two gifts. Duo. Mm -hmm. Duo. Immediately, the man of God commanded fratribus, the brothers, divinum officium peragere, to perform divine service. It postea corpora reficere, and afterwards to refresh their bodies. Quia nullum tedium habebant, in order that they might have no no slack time, apparently. Um, de cibo sumere, um, from taking food out potu or drink postquam viderent ilam columnam, after they had seen that column. Um, good, except quia with the indicative just means because. Okay. Right. Oh, oh, I see. Be have, because, because because they haven't had a break. Have. Right. Exactly. I actually knew that. Right. Good. I thought I did. Transacta vero ila nocte, but that night having. Will, passed, sorry, w William. Do you want me to break out my theory about tedium or not? Uh, sure. Ooh, okay. I'm on here. Is it like well, downtime? <laughs> well, see that that's what that's what uh, what Omira says, but I wasn't able to find any usage for that. So I just went back to the dictionary and looked at the standard classical meanings, one of which is you know loathing or disgust or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I wondered if that was what it was getting at. You know, they've been if they're sitting here more or less becalmed inside this crystal column, uh, I wonder if it might be easier to eat and drink without getting a tummy ache. I see. Um, because so they have no loathing. They have no, you know, they have no disgust to take up food and drink after they saw that column. Now the problem with that is the after they saw that column doesn't make quite so much sense as if you said they had no downtime. 
But I don't know why they didn't have any downtime. They got well, four days while Brendan is going around meticulously measuring the insides of the doggone thing. Well, while he's doing that, maybe they're like having to row and you know. Yeah, c keep it moving. Yeah, so they have to yeah. keep it moving so that he can measure. Yeah. But I, but I wondered if there was at least for mathematical accuracy. But I wondered if there was at least a possibility that's like, oh yay. We can have something to eat and drink without without feeling like we're gonna barf. You know, I, I, I just wondered if the if the three day fasts that we've been talking about while I've been out on the ocean might not have been purely ascetic. I'm not sure. I'm just throwing it out, sorry. That's that's no. interesting. I it makes a certain amount of sense. I liked it way better in your email than I do now, but that's doesn't mean anything. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, partly because we haven't had any, we haven't had any sense that they ever have any trouble eating. No, we haven't. I mean, obviously they could be seasick, but uh, mostly they just. The question is, how much food, are they going to have enough food? Do they have enough to eat? Right. right. The question is, the question is not, are they going to have trouble digesting it, so they can have enough right. to eat? Right. But they're always happy when, like, the steward guy brings them food. Right. Right, and and you get the impression that they're eating every three days, you know, per treatum, as it says more than once, because the supplies are limited. I've and got, because I, they're monks, I, and that's what they do. Right. Yeah. yeah. But as I say, I, I wonder if there's... Anyway, I, all, all, de all depends on what you think tidium means. Right. Um, but this would be an... This would be, as far as I can tell from mm -hmm. looking at the dictionaries, um, a, 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 virtue, a unique usage to make this a kind of downtime. Right. Because, because classically we would want to say something more like otium, wouldn't we? Exactly. Yeah. Or, 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 they, or, or some form of, of uh, vacare. Right. In fact, otium would be a great textual conjecture, you know, a great conjecture. Right, that the manuscript got it wrong, and that it's really odium. I would totally buy that. Yeah, actually, yeah, I would. I'm no, I'm no critic, but I, that's that's brilliant, Jamie. I'm gonna <laughs> not only make a note of it, but but change the text. <laughs> well, maybe change the text, but certainly, um, anytime you get to, anytime you suggest an emendation that works, you know, your name goes into the app crit forever and ever. Um, and you know what? If if, if and if you would do a bunch of minims with otium or tadium, you could see how it would be a very easy mm -hmm. mistake to make. Mistake. Yeah. All right. Totally. You nailed that one, Jamie. At least I. Thanks. For, for the for, for the five of six of us here and the six viewers that we've got on. Anyway, I think we can all. Yep. Just reach a harmonious agreement. I agree. I agree. Let's let's mm -hmm. make it otium. That that's good. And we don't have to worry about monastic digestion. Exactly. <laughs> Probably a subject better left undiscussed. Yes. Transacta vero illa nocte, but that night having passed, ceperunt fratres navigare contra septentrionem, the brothers began to sail north. <coughs> Cum autem transisent quodam foramen, but when they had passed through a certain hole, or passed across a certain hole, Possuerunt arborum et bella in altum, they put the mast and sails up high, or that they raised the mast and sails, et alii tenebant ex fratribus fibulas conopei, and some of the brothers had or held fibulas, is this brooches, like the oh, fibula no, that we're familiar thread. with? Thread. Uh, the oh, threads thread. of the net, yeah. Like the threads of the net, quosque, as long as omnia preparasent in navi. Everything had been prepared, or until everything had been prepared in the ship. And so that's right, that's right. It's really, I think here, it's really until. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I, I'm, I'm just, maybe I've got this wrong. There's the... There's the crystal column, and it's all sort of being held together by this net. Is that how this works? I, I got the sense. 
It's just yeah. all kind of draped over it. Yeah, I got the sense that the net was kind of draped. Yeah, like 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 a tent, like, like a tent. sort of pyramidal tent. Mm -hmm. Pyramid, exactly. I can't even say that word. Yes, it's like an obelisk with a tent on top of it, making a pyramid-like structure. Right. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. Thank you. As Brendan has told us at some length from his measuring, or has told. That's through through the writer. Mm. Keep going. Um, extensis omnibus, all of them, that is the sails, being raised or spread, cepit prosper ventus post illus flare, a favoring wind began to blow after them, or behind them, ita ut nikil illis opus fuiset, um, so that there was, there had been, or there was, no work for them, nor no work to them, navigare to sail, nisi tantum tenere funiculos et gubernaculum, except to hold on to the ropes and the rudder, which is obviously somewhat necessary in any case. Sic ferabantur per octo dies naticula contra aquilonim. Thus, the little boat was carried for eight days northwards. Because they were carried, right? Very oh, yes. They were carried. Were they carried? Is, yeah, I asked you about Fair this one. Is they were carried for in the boat? Or oh. by the boat? Yeah, don't you, know? you think? Yeah, yeah sort of by, by means of the boat. That right. makes sense. It's an ablative okay. of means. Right. Great. Okay. Thank you, Jamie. That's, uh, that's okay. wonderful. Any comments? Um, just a, a teeny little thing. In the next to last sentence there, um, this is a really idiomatic thing in Latin, James. Yes. Opus est plus the ablative means there is need of. Right. Yeah. Rather okay. than there is work. It's right. from the word work, but in that construction it means to need. Yes, they, that, that makes literally, sense. they didn't need to sail except... Yeah. Except, Hold, except hold them, holding hold all the ropes of the steps. rudder. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. All right. Uh, great job, Jim. That's very good. Isn't it nice? I mean, I'm a great believer in, you know, straightforward, not totally easy. There's always, there's always a little booby trap. But, but I love the sense of just that one can master this stuff. That Latin doesn't. Not every Latin is. A, not every Latin sentence has to be a crossword puzzle. You know, it just. Um, anyway, that's that's just me. All right, um, Mona, are you doing twenty-three? Is it right? Twenty-three one. Twenty-three one. Take it away. Transactis autem diebus octo, videre non longe, valde rusticam saxosam saxosam atque scoriosam. Now, when eight days had been completed, they saw an island not far away, very um, rustic, rocky, and scoriosome, and rough, without trees and grass. Um, oh, I'll just cut off that sentence. Sine arboribus et herba plenum officinis faborum without any trees and grass, abounding in the workshops of craftsmen, Good. workmen. Um, Venerabilis pater ait fratribus suis, vere fratres, angustia es mihi de hac insula, quia nolo in illam ire, aut etiam sibi apropunquare, sedentus illux subtrahit nos rectu cursu. Um, then the venerable father said to his brothers, um, truly, brothers, uh, I am distressed about this island because I do not wish to go to that spot, that place, or even come near to it. But the wind draws us to that place um, on a direct course or with a direct course. Um, ergo illis preteruntibus parumper quantum yactus es lapidis, um, adi, audierunt sonitus folium suflantium quasi tonitrum, aeque okay. maleorum, collisione, maleorum collisiones contraferum et incudes, um, 
Uh, thus, with those men passing by, other understood that island or that place for a short time. Um, as far as the throw of a stone or a stone's throw is, they heard the sounds of a pair of um, blowing bellows mm -hmm. as if um, thunder, as if it were thunder. Good. Um, and the clashes of hammers against iron in, um, in Kudes, anvils. Good. Uh, his auritis venerabilis pater armavit se Dominico trofeo in quattro partes deacons. Domini Jesu Christe liberanos de hac insula. Um, these things having been heard, or when these things had been heard, the venerable father um, armed himself with the sign of the cross um, in four directions, mm -hmm. saying, Lord Jesus Christ, deliver us from this island. Good. Now, now, this is absolutely fascinating. It sounds like he is having a vision of the industrial age or something. <laughs> he it's is. Like the medieval monk meets the industrial age and detests the whole thing. What? Uh, or maybe he's just afraid. <laughs> Mo yeah. Mona, Mona, could he you doesn't do like it. He <laughs> doesn't. Mona, could you... Uh, Angustia es mihi de hoc insula. I just some, somehow missed what she did. Okay, wait, where is it? Let's see. Angustia. Sorry, third line. Very fratres. Um, angustia es mihi hoc insula. Mm, did I get that? Um, this is kind of like I have angst because of this. Did I leave that out? Mm hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I you think gave I it some, it. somewhat of a more idiomatic English translation, I think, is okay. what you did. You said, I'm distressed. Yeah, distressed, or um, there is angst to me, or fear yeah, right. because of this island. Yeah, yeah. I'm this island. Okay, Excuse I'm the cattail. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. I, I have angst. angst. It's no, early, I like I angst. Like angst. early okay. Irish angst. Yeah, I think a uh, also, a couple of lines down, this is extremely fussy, but tone it true, um. Uh, um oh, that's genitive plural. As exactly. If right, so it's the sound of, of, it's the sound of puffing bellows as if of oh, thunderclaps or something like, I mean, the, the, the meaning is right. Yeah. Okay, so cool. Um, uh, Bruce, do you want to talk about your your Domenico Trofeo in Quattro Partes? Yeah, I will, and I and I'm, I'll, I might even do another joke. Okay. Oh God dear. Help, God help us. Um, well, I wonder if, uh, and and this would be possible at the time when the text was written, and not impossible at the time that. Uh, that, that Brendan lived, is if it's not making the sign of the cross in all directions, but doing this, what we call crossing yourself, um, which certainly was kind of a normal thing among people by the 9th or 10th century. Mm -hmm. So I think, and maybe Brendan didn't do it, but people are, are doing gestures like this from the 4th or 5th century and just struck me as the lordly to as the token of the Lord or something like that in four parts made up it just seemed weird that Brendan would like, you know, spin around ninety degrees and then do something else. Right. Especially when the thing he's afraid of is off to one particular side. Right. You would exactly. think he would make the sign across in the direction of the island. Right. Yeah. That, that's that's sort of what I thought. He it's not as if it's not as if they have, you know, those fierce jellyfish surrounding in a, a circle anymore. Hello, cat. Now, do you want the joke? I don't know, do we? Sure. So, a priest and a rabbi are, are traveling together by bus to an ecumenical conference. And the priest is very insistent that everyone, deep down, is a Catholic 
And the rabbi is having absolutely none of this. He says, see, there are Protestants, there are, there are Muslims, I'm a Jew, you're a Catholic world. So, well, this being Greyhound or something like that, of course, the bus tumbles off the road. Both the priest and the rabbi are thrown away from the bus, but they are miraculously unhurt. Now, here's the part where you have to, again, God help you, look at me. And the priest sees that the rabbi does this. And the priest says, see, see, you know, you're giving thanks that you, your life has been preserved and you, and you make the sign of the cross and you've just showed that everyone deep down is a Catholic. And the rabbi says, I'm just checking spectacles, testicles, heart, wallet. <laughs> Okay. Welcome to Bad Joke Night with the Medieval Latin Crew. All right. Uh, it could be a long semester. <laughs> um, it's already a long summer for William. Yeah. Um, no, anyway. Um, thank you for that, Bruce. Thank you for your translation, Mona. That was very good. Yeah, I, I, I think we should thank Mona more. Uh, who would like to continue? We have a certain amount of broken field running until we get to Paula. And um, thought, um, I yeah, I think both of those. Yeah, think we've got some more. Yeah, Mona has another right. section. Keep going, Mona. Great. No one shall escape. <laughs> <laughs> Finito sermone viridi dei, ecce unus ex habitatoribus, eustim insule, egredibatur, Foras quasi ad alicor opus faciendum. Um, the speech of the man of God, having been finished, or when he had finished his speech, lo, um, one of the inhabitants um, of the same island was stepping out, outside, stepping outside, as if for the purpose of doing some work. Mm -hmm. um, Era ille hispidus valde et ignius atque tenebrosus. That man, is, um, Ile, was very hairy and fiery and tenebrosus, dark, yeah. mysterious, dark. Mm -hmm. um, cum vero vidisset fami famulos Christi transire uxta ilam insulam, reversus es in suum officinam. Um, but when he had seen uh, the servants of Christ go across or sail across near that island, uh, he returned into his workshop. Videi iterum sur amavit et ait fratribus filioli tendite in altum plus vela et simul navigate quantiosus at quae fugiamus istam insulam. Um, the man of God uh, armed himself again and said to the brothers. Um, dear sons, uh, hold the sails or raise the sails more into the sky, um, raise the sails higher. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, uh, sail as quickly as possible and let us flee um, that island. So, it's time in some. <laughs> this is hard to say. Titius, 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 Dico Dicto Esse, Ece, Predictus Barbaras Acurit Ad Litis Illis E Regione, Portans Forcipem in Manibus Cum Massa Ignea, in Scorio, Immensae Magnitudinis Atque Fovoris. Um, having been said rather quickly, uh, when this had been rather quickly said, Good. No, I'll bet. <laughs> The aforementioned savage um, ran to the shore to meet those men directly, mm -hmm. carrying um, forceps or tongs in his hands, along with a, a fiery lump of, it's like pyroclastic rock, scoria, it's actually a rock, fiery lump of scoria mm. of great size, and heat. Um, 
he let me Qui statum super famulos Christi, yactavit predictam massam, sed illis non nocuit. He immediately cast uh, the aforementioned lump or mass upon the servants of Christ, but it did not harm those men. Mm -hmm. um, transivit inem elos quasi spatium unius stadii ultra. Um, indeed, um, it passed over these men virtually farther um, than the distance of one stadium, like about 600 feet or so. Yes. Nam ubi kekedit in mare, chepit ferrari quasi ruina montis igne fuiset ibi, et ascendebat fumus de mare sicut de cribano ignis. Um, for where it fell into the ocean, or into the sea, um, it began to boil as if the collapse of a mountain of fire had been there, or had happened, let's say, and the smoke was rising from the, from the sea like fire from um, an, what do you call it? Or I'm going to say barbecue pit from an oven. <laughs> I like barbecue pit. I, I like, like barbecue that. Chimenea. The chimenea, yeah. Is is anyone else channeling Polyphemus here? The oh, savage yeah. on his mm -hmm. island throwing stuff yeah. at the sailors? It's very yep. Vulcan, very much um, Vulcan like. Mm -hmm. um, no, but I think Polyphemus particularly is, is, is certainly uh, lots of scholars have. have Assume that here there's some memory, especially of the Aeneid description of of the Cyclops, um, uh, and of course also channeling a memory of volcanic islands, mm -hmm. uh, shooting off stuff you know, of which there are some in the Atlantic, um, Iceland and stuff. Where in the Atlantic, of course, being a vexed question as usual, I suppose. <laughs> well, yes. But, but they they talk about Hecla in Iceland um, uh, as being a good candidate. Um, also, I think Tenerife. Um, anyway, uh, great. Any questions? In um, let's see. It's I think the fifth line down there, the Kitius Dicto. Um, well, I know you took it as an like an ablative absolute, but I assumed it was an ablative of um, comparison with Kitius swifter than his word, like before he had even finished talking. Like, no sooner said than done, we might yeah. say. Oh. In, um, another word, yeah. in other words, before he got it all out, yeah, yeah, the, the, the bearded the man came back. Oh, that's it. Thank you. That's well, It's a pretty that makes sense. Cool idiom, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, swifter than thought, swifter than word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's complicated here. Be I mean, it's it's trickier here because dicto is, of course, could also be as as Mona took it a, a perfect passive participle. But um, if it yeah, were, that's 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 certainly how I took it. Right. But I like I like. Yeah, it's more elegant the other way. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and you'd certainly. I don't. I'm pretty sure you see kick. Hideous where where bow things like that where it's clear mm -hmm. so the parallels make it clearer that that's what's going on. Thank you, Jen. Yes. Okay, the sixty-four thousand dollar question: Who wants to translate at sight? Uh, I can do this one. Okay, good. Before you do, notice that in line three. I mean, let me uh, let me observe. Tell you that in line three, the third word in after. After Famulos Christi, that suam is totally not supposed to be there. I don't know where it came from. I don't know why it's there, but it makes no sense, and it's not in Selmer's edition. So just, just exit out and pretend you never saw it. Okay. Uh, okay. Take away, Bert. Um, I feel like this first comma is unnecessary. The first comma? 
that's possible. So yes, you're ignore it if you want to. We're not hearing anything. Yeah, but you have the worst microphone frozen. in the Western Hemisphere. <laughs> I don't mean to insult your laptop. <laughs> might have been cut off. Yes. We see you now. We see your eyes move, which is encouraging. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, I'll do that again. Um, but indeed, the man of God, when he had passed about the space of one mile from that place where the mass fell, all who, all who had been on that island ran out to the shore. Each of them carrying their own nets. Uh, Bert, scream, please. Hello. Say, la talk louder. Hello. Oh, okay. Sorry, couldn't hear me. Okay. That's a little better. Yeah, that's better. Uh. Okay, so they ran to the shore, each carrying their own masses. And um, the others, yes. uh, and, and some threw masses into the sea beyond the servants of Christ, and others were throwing their own masses beyond the others. Yeah, one 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 person was throwing his mass on top of another person. Okay. Who was throwing his mass? In other words, they were throwing their masses in turn. They all had masses, and they were taking turns throwing them. Okay. Always returning into their um, into their workplaces and. Burning up more and forging them. Yep. And at the same time, it appeared as the whole island, just as no, he's frozen. He's frozen again, which is odd in view of the amount of fire we have going. You wouldn't think yeah. anyone could freeze. As though the whole island were burning. There you are. Right? Are you back, Bert? Yeah, at the same time it appeared as if the whole island was burning just like one Klebanus? Uh oven. Just Barbecue like pit, if you prefer. <laughs> well they're portable. They're more like those um chimeneas. Like we have a chimenea that's I don't know what that is. Uh that's not a word that's not one of my words. Chimeneas? <laughs> Chimenea. Oh, okay. Like, it's like a sort of Mexican oven thing. Okay. Um, I sell them down here. Green eggs that they sell in gourmet stores. Um, oh yes. You no. Know. Anyway. Best barbecue ever. Right. Okay. Except for never mind. Never you mind. don't need barbecue recommendations. No. Well, although that, well, no. no but if you're ever in Texas. <laughs> All right. Bird. Keep going. So this is a portable clay oven, this Clibanus. So the whole island was, uh, whole, sorry, the whole island was burning like one, like a portable oven. And the sea was boiling, just like a pot full with meat boiling, um, when well, uh, well tended by fire. Good. And um, they heard throughout the whole day a, a great away from that island. Good. And even when they were not able to see it, uh, to their ears, uh, um, keep this uh, yelling of the inhabitants on that island. And Did you get Atingebat Adhuk? It was still touching them. 
this yelling of the inhabitants on that island. It still, it still struck their ears, as right. it were. And, okay. Uh, and a huge... What's a tent? Are you on Fator? Yeah. A huge stink. Oh, stinks, not tent. Right, no, that's my... Uh, this print. Then. Okay. And then, okay, and then, okay, that makes sense. A huge stench was coming to the area. A tench, I believe, is a type of fish. Right. Yes. Which I'm sure can also stink. Right. Uh, Especially if you barbecue it. <laughs> then the Holy Father was comforting his monks, saying, O soldiers of Christ, uh, let us be strengthened in faith and um, and not in not in not in manufactured arms, but in spiritual arms. Is that the sense? Uh, I would say it means, O oh, soldiers of Christ, strengthen yourselves. Right, be strong. Be strong. Yeah, it's a, it's an it's an imperative. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, be strong in a faith that's not that's not fake. Oh, okay. And be strong in your spiritual weapons. Right. Ficta agrees with Fide. Right. Uh, Fide known Ficta is uh, it's uh, it's one of the letters of Paul. It might be one of the Timothys. This is where that it, the Fide known Ficta and this and this gets repeated. But it, in a faith that is unfeigned. Oh. Uh, un, un, unmanufactured. Didn't know okay. that. Because we are in the boundaries of the underworld. Yes. Uh, therefore, be watchful and... Uh, man up. Man up, yeah. Right. <laughs> good. Uh, very good. One, one thing. I, we do have... Uh, in the last few sections, we do have word order that seems very strange. Mm -hmm. I think in the middle of that section, uh, Sicut Cacobus Plainus Carnibus Estuans Quando Bene Ministratur Ab Igne. I think actually the Ab Igne is supposed to go with Estuans. So mm -hmm. it's like a pot full of meat burning from the fire when it is well tended. So it's the, it's the it boil, it, you know, boiling. It's the, it's the pot that's boiling. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. It, 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 it's like this. It's like this a couple of times we had, you know, uh, uh, Kettery, space, space, you know, word, 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 ex fratribus. We're just really messing with the fact that word order doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Okay. Is anyone else? Great, Bert. Thanks. Well done, Bert. Okay, we've got three small passages before we get to to Paula and Judas. That, that sounds awkward. Um, Paula reading about Judas. Um, um, any volunteers for 24.1? Um, I'll do it. Okay. Okay, 24-1. Um, Altara vero die apparu et illis mons altus in oceano contra septum trionum non longe, quasi per tenues nubilas sed balde fumosus erat in um, But on another day, there appeared to those men um, a high mountain in the ocean, not far off towards the north. Yeah, if, Alter is probably the next day, or on the second the next day. day. Instead of on any day. Um, not far off towards the north, as if through uh, thin clouds. Mm -hmm. But it was very smoky on the summit, um, <laughs> or foggy, maybe. At statem rapidissimo crusu ventus traxit illus ad litus eus dem insulae usque dum naus resedit non longe a terra. Um, and immediately, with rapid movement, the wind drew those men to the shore of the same island mm -hmm. until the boat um, settled 
not far from the land. Good. Um, Great. Erat wow. non que ripa ilius magnae altitudinis, ut ita ut simitatim ilius vix potuissent videre, et coloris carbonis, et mire rectitudinis secret muris. Um, for the seashore, or the shore of that island, um, was of a great height. I think, uh, yeah. It's hard to know how to reach a yeah, something like a yeah, bank. Yeah, a bank, something like that. It's mm -hmm. a weird, it's, a, it's not the way we usually use that right. word. Right. Um, was such Classical, a great height. Anyway. So that they had been scarcely able to see the top of it. Um, yeah, here's another one of those doggone pluperfects of, right. of post film. But they were scarcely able to see the top of it. Mm -hmm. um, and of the color of charcoal, and of mere rectitudinous of, of a wondrous, um, what do you call it, like verticality, I guess. Yeah. Straightness, like maybe. Straightness. More right. English. Right. Good. Great. Uh, so this is the one they identify with Hecla or Tenerife. I'm just reading my own notes. Um, uh, the other one is those uh, is that the the island of the of the the Vulcan guys the of the blacksmiths, blacksmiths is identified with those islands that appear. There are smoking islands in Iceland or off Iceland or or a smoking island. Um, but I forgot what that one's name is. Is it Surtsey? Well, no, Surtsey is new. Surtsey wouldn't have been there then. Yeah, but I think it, I think they assume that the phenomenon took place from time to time. As in other words, that it's a phenomenon of that part of the world. Um, but uh, I'm obviously very sort of vague on this. So let's keep going. Um, I do find this vo this this volcano incident very kind of weird and scary and cool. Um, anybody want to go ahead? Jen, do you want to volunteer? No problem. Okay. Unus quidam qui remantit extribus ratibus qui subsequuti sunt sanctum brandanum de suo monasterio. So one guy who one who remained from the three brothers who um, followed St. Brendan from their monastery, mm -hmm. um, jumped out of the boat and began to walk all the way to the bottom of the bank. Quiquepit mm -hmm. uh, clamare, um, and he began to shout, Deacon, saying, We mihi pater praedor a wobis. Um, Alas for me, O oh Father, I am being stolen away from you. At non habeo potestatum or possum venire ad wolves, and I do not have um, the power, the ability to come to you, to be able to come to you. Yeah, I, I think Jen got this exactly right. Pridor classically is usually a deponent, but anti classically and post classically, especially in the Vulgate, it is it is understood as being passive in meeting. So I think. I am stolen away from you. I'm seized from you. Is exactly right. Yeah, I looked it up because it didn't make any sense. So yeah. Uh, Fratres confessed now when retro a terra ducebant, the brothers immediately were leading back uh, their boat from the land, at clamabant ad dominum ducentes, and were shouting to the Lord, saying, Miserere nobis domine, miserere nobis, have pity on us, Lord, have pity on us. At Velo, when our abulus pater cum so, sui sociis aspiciebat quomodo ducebatur ille in felix a multitudine demonum ad tormenta. Um, but truly, the um, venerable father was um, looking with, along with his um, companions, was looking to see how that um, unhappy man was being led away by a multitude of demons to torments. Mm -hmm. Et quomodo incandebatur inter illos, and how he was being set on fire among them. At quae ducebat, and he was saying, uh, why tibi fili, quia reque pisti in vita tua meriti talem finem? Alas for you, O oh my son, 
because you have received um, such an end for your merit in your life. Yeah. Yeah, what, in other words, the end you deserve right. in your life, right? Yeah. So I have a question, a vocabulary question. Um, to what extent had the word um, daimon come to mean, come to have its modern meaning of demon, like an evil angel, at this point, and to what extent did it still bear its classical, more pagan meaning of, you know, some kind of intermediate spirit, like some of the Gnostics and Platonists were interested in, some kind of just a sort of spirit thingy? as opposed to what we now think of as a demon or devil. To what extent had the by lexical the, transition been made by this point? By the time the author, this author is writing, they just would have seen these as demons. They would have seen these as helpers of the devil. I think, that, okay. I, I think that ancient daimon, which could very much be a protective spirit, uh, okay. which kind of very roughly gets Christianized into, uh, uh, you know, your sort of, your, your, guard, your guardian saint. Mm. Um, but I think, but I think a, a, a daimon at this point is, is, is a, a, a servant of the devil. Okay. I read a, I read a really interesting article um, in the Athlone History of Magic. It's a series of books and um, there's a rather long academic article about um, the Diamond Ace and how um, they are slowly converted in, in once Christianity takes over as the main religion of the empire. Um, they're divided into, yes, guardian spirits, but also angels and demons. And that occurs around mm -hmm. the 4th century or so. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's, quite a, it's a really interesting article. I can give you the reference if you want it. Mm. Well, post, post it. Um, yeah, please. Uh, I would have thought that seems to me the, the the easy answer to, J to Jamie's question is that the new the Bible, the New Testament, really shapes the Christian understanding of what a demon is. So if you think about, isn't the Gadarene swine they get the demon gets mm -hmm. cast out gets mm -hmm. cast out? They're clearly the demons are clearly the hench persons of Satan. Mm -hmm. In the New Testament, it seems to me. No? Yes, what? that makes sense. But uh, isn't, that, the, uh, isn't the rural Hebrew, I mean, you're talking about a bunch of rural Jews in, mm -hmm. in Nazareth versus later writers who are Hellenized. Uh, we have some two pretty distinct views on what constitutes demons and, and things like that. I mean, the, you know, the, the, um, Contemporary Jews of Christ's time believed that all sickness, for example, especially insanity, is caused by possession of demons. Mm -hmm. By demon possession. I'm not yeah. sure that that's universally accepted in uh, Hel Helena, Hellenic thought and Greek thought, um, especially from with the more educated. Well, sure. I'm just saying, but there's surely for a medieval monk, there's a pretty straight line from the mm -hmm. Vulgate New Testament to their their language. Um, mm -hmm. So doing kind of sidestepping all of that, you know, that Gnostic, the good demon stuff. They're not, they're not sitting around reading about Plato, reading, reading about Socrates and his daimon. Um, so anyway, that's what... Uh, well, I mean, sure. I mean, Jerome's, Jerome's Vulgate translation has a lot to do with how, how they later decide what to do with the daimones. Right. But... Originally, that story is in Aramaic, being told by um, uneducated Jews from from Palestine, and it's a very different viewpoint than the the broader Greco-Roman one that is first translated into Greek and then is translated into Latin. I don't know about Aramaic. I didn't think anyone thought the New Testament was ever written in Aramaic. But what do I? Well, know? No, I don't. I'm talking about the original story being told orally. Oh well, you're, you're about out of my pay grade. I'm I only do texts, <laughs> um, especially when it comes to like the New Testament. What am I doing? I've, I've been reading it. I've, yeah, I've been reading a book about about how uh, basically it's how early Christians came to believe that Christ was divine, 
and and he talks about the text. Yeah, it's, and, it's a good book. Post on post about that too. Yeah. Never, um, Jamie, do you feel like volunteering for the last? I would love to. Four point three. I would be thrilled to. Okay, take it away. Iterum av ripuit ilos prosper ventus ad australem placam. Again, a favorable wind carried them to the southern shore. Cum autem aspexisent a longe retro ilam insulam, but when they, or when, yes, but when they had looked back from a long way at that island, viderunt montem disco pertum a fumo, they saw the mount, or they saw a mountain uncovered with the smoke, basically like with the smoke having blown away from it. Et asse spumantem flamas usque ad ethera, and from it spewing flames, or, and from it flames spewing all the way to the ether. That would be like the purified atmosphere that was above the regular atmosphere <laughs> in the medieval world picture. Thank yep. you, C.S. Lewis. Yes. <laughs> I read the discarded image, so I know this. That is a great book. That is one of the highest value for page books that I know of. I short enjoyed it. Short books giving you lots of ideas, or, or as opposed to big, could be better. big books giving you not so many. Um, anyway, keep going. Okay. Um, et iterum ad se erastem flamas respirantem, and again, sucking the same flames back into itself, ita ut totus man, mons usque in mare unus rogus apparuiset, so that the whole mountain, all the way to the sea, looked or had looked like one funeral pyre. Yes. Good. Uh, we do think that disco opertum must mean not covered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or uncovered, like it was previously covered and they couldn't see. And now it's not. It's not classical, so I'll have to do some little research on it. Um, but yes. Sorry. And by the way, it looks like we have two Bruce's, neither Bruce. functional. <laughs> Maybe we'll get twice as many jokes. Um, uh, Eric Asal. I do just want to say that I think this is a very cool ending. I mean, harsh, right? But you've got somebody basically going to hell, and he's going to hell, as Delmer says, by basically being swallowed up in a volcano, which is what you might call really literally appropriate, right? I mean, mm -hmm. how... How? What other way would anyone ever go to hell? It's hard to imagine. You know, they go to hell, and you know, mm -hmm. you know, just by the other ways that you go to hell. This just seems to be like a sort kind of, of a, a royal road to hell. The um, spectacular version. Spectacular and fiery furnacey. And of course, I only say this now. Oh dear! Now we have three Bruce's. Now we have three Bruce's. We're going to try to get back in. Um, uh, but it obviously sets up what's about to happen, which is the non-hell thing, you know, because Judas is in this weird interstitial place. Right. And, and for just a spoiler alert, one of the most interesting things about the, fi the end of the book is this exploration of the kind of purgat purgatory kind of idea. Um, so anyway, uh, Bruce is back. Paula. Yeah, I'm sorry. My my machine overheated. It's, oh, on, right. it's oh, literally sitting on an ice pack now. Weird. Oh, wow. dear. Um, well, well, how appropriate. No wonder it overheated. Yeah, right. Uh, We're talking about go. fiery volcanoes and hell. Mine seems just so, like... Just to warn you guys, my area is being run over by uh, thunderstorms right now. and um, I had a glitch about 40 minutes ago. Uh, yeah. So and I had to get back on, but hopefully it's done. <laughs> don't don't say anything blasphemous. We're, I'll try not to. We're at twenty five point one. Take right. Okay. Um, Victor Sanctus Brendanus cum navigaset contra meridiem iter septem dierum aparuit ilis 
in mare quedam formula quasi hominis sedentis supra petram et vellum yeah that is all in one sentence sorry et vellum ante ilum a longe quasi mensura unius sagi pendens inter duas fercelas ferias et sic agi agi ha agi tabatur fluctibus sicut navicula solet quando periclitatur a turbine. Ooh. All right. <laughs> so that was a really long sentence. Yeah. Okay. Then Saint Brendan, when he sailed, uh, this is into the south, right? Did we all decide that Contra? Yep. Right. Yep. Okay. Towards the south. Towards the south, right? Um, four seven days. Mm-hmm. Yep. There appeared to them uh, in the sea a certain shape like a man sitting upon a rock. Good. And a skin before him with a length about the measure of one woolen mantle. Yes. Hanging between two little iron forks. Yes. Um, now, I'm not quite sure. And thus was shaken by waves. Yes. Was it the, is it the little boat that's shaken by waves? No, it's the man who's being shaken boat. by waves. Well, that's, so I was thinking about that. Okay, okay, and thus he was shaken by waves. And See. if the little boat was accustomed um, at whatever time it was in danger from a certain whirlwind, yeah, yeah. Just, just just like a little boat is accustomed, that is accustomed to be tossed when it's uh, endangered by a whirlwind. Right. Okay. Um, others among the brothers, or some among the brothers, I guess, were saying um, that there was a bird, or that it was a bird. It, it was it's a, a bird. bird. It's a bird. It's a bird. Okay. And I was wondering, is it, is it that it ought to be a bird? That with subjunctive, we're talking here. That's a that's a. This is an indirect question, right? Right. They okay. said some of them mm -hmm. said that it was a bird. Yeah. Okay. Others were um, thinking about the boat. Thought it was a boat. Mm -hmm. Or thinking that it was a boat. Okay. Oh, I see. Others thinking it's a boat. Right. Um, the man of God, when he heard them arguing among themselves in this way, yeah, said, um, and I know this is a really straightforward Anglo-Saxon way of putting it, stop fighting. <laughs> right. I know you can say this in a more complex way, but I thought, uh, I'm not going to bother. No, you can say stop, stop, argue. stop, can say stop argue. arguing, stop but fighting. That's, that's what it yeah. is. Yeah. Stop fighting is bait, yeah. Cease from fighting, stop fighting, yeah. Um, direct the course of the ship as far as that place or to that place. Good. Okay. So uh, 25 point, oops, so I forgot to say that. Um, Ali ex fratribus dicebant od avis eset, Ali navim, navim putabant, vir dei cum audicet eos intra se conferentes talia, Ait sine te contendera, dirigite cursum navis usque ad illum locum. Okay. Moving on. Uh, before you move on. Yes? Um, Bruce said that the asset was subjunctive. Decabant quod avis asset was subjunctive. I asked if it was subjunctive. Right. And he said it was an subjunctive because it was an indirect question. And I think it's just because it's an indirect. It's an indirect. Yeah, you're right. It's not a question. You're right. But so it's not subjunctive. It is subjunctive. It's it just is. an indirect statement. Okay. Not a question. That's right. Uh, so because they're asking a question and they're not sure, it's subjunctive. He said that it's just an indirect statement. I mean, he said that it was a bird. Um, it's just not an indirect question, though, is it? No, it's not. Well, it, I, I mean, they're they're basically they're not sure what it is. 
So, I mean, plane, it's a UFO. Is something... What? I said it's a bird, it's a plane, it's a UFO. Right, right. But then it turns out to be Superman, so none of those possibilities are true. And the subjunctive is about things that aren't actually what's happening. Mm -hmm. so, so, so like we might say, they said it might be a bird, it might be a plane. Right, might, that yes. Be, or a boat. Jeff, Alpha, the ruling. I, I think it's just subjunctive because it's in, an, in this medieval indirect statement. This is not classical. And you've got the classical one right next to it. Right. Yeah. That's so weird. Mm -hmm. It's just subjunctive because it's in a quad clause. They right. said that it was a bird. It's not that it might be a bird. It's not a potential. It's it really is. No, right. it's not right. Right. Yeah. And yeah. and it's because it's in this it's in this thing that's substituting for an indirect statement that is how it, indirect statements ends up in all the romance languages. You know, right. so that they mm -hmm. I just, thank you. I wanted I just wanted to clarify because I find indirect statements indirect questions in classical Latin tricky enough because often they're not Often they don't seem like questions to us. Uh -huh. yeah. I just want to straighten that out. Yeah, I, I apologize for sending us down that rabbit hole. No, no, no. I, it's I, it's totally understandable. It's uh, it's just it's hard. All right, Paula. I'm sorry. Twenty five point two. Okay. Well, now we know it, it is subjunctive, and we have an idea why. Right. Okay. That's all I need wanted to know. Um, and I have another question, but it's it, it's um, it's overall structure of these two passages, so I'm going to finish it first. Okay. Um, cum vero vir dei iluc apropin quaset restiterunt unde in circuitu quasi coagulate et invenerunt hominem sedentum supra petram hispidum ac deformem et unde ex omni parte, quando effluebant ad ilum percuciebant, eum usque ad verticem, et quando recedebant apparebat ila petra nuda, in qua sedebat in felix ile. Another long sentence. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. When verily the man of God approached it, or is it it or him? Uh, it looked there. there. The man. What? There. Approached there. Okay, I was uh, and that, that. Again, this is a, this is a blue perfect had, had approached, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that one right. works. Yeah. yeah. That one actually works. Right. Okay, yeah, had approached it. Um, they stayed thence in a circuit uh, as if gathered together? This one, okay. this one, you really need, I, I need my own note on this one. Unde, yeah. medieval for undi. The way uh, resisted. Resisted? The, the waves resisted. Oh, the waves resisted. Okay. Right. Okay, so they were, they were like circling around the rock. Well, the waves resisted in a circuit as though they were coagulated. Uh, or maybe maybe it, they just sat. They just, or mm -hmm. stood, or they stayed. That rather than resisted, they just, this is just system with yeah. a characteristically right. medieval addition of a, a, of a, of a prona, of a yeah. preposition. Okay. Like yeah, I like that. Uh, they the waves just stood there in a circle, as though as they if curdled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Instead oh, of curdled. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like curdled or something. Okay. Yeah, I found that an interesting difference because today we would say as if frozen, but I suppose things curdling was more common in the days before freezers than things freezing, or would would be a more natural right. metaphor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it would be sometimes you'd be deliberately curdling things too. Right. So. Right. Like like cottage cheese to preserve it. Right. But there's certainly lots of places in, I'm sure Ireland too, where you see water freeze. Right. Sure. But, but but it wouldn't yeah. have been as much a part of everyday life. It wouldn't be something you kept for, in your house. For winter time, it would. 
Not, you know, surprisingly little. Remember, there are palm trees on the south of Ireland. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Not the cold it gets the... there in the winter. It, well, now, hang on a second. Is this the medieval warm period yet? Because it's yes. relatively cold in the first part of the Middle Ages. I still think Jamie's basic point is actually a really good one, that the household experience... Right. Would have been if something curdled, not frozen. Yeah. Yeah. Water freeze, right. which is so common to us, mm-hmm. would have been nothing like the... Whereas we... it's. We rarely watch butter turn, I mean, milk turn into butter. They did it right. all the time. Right. They would rarely watch water turn into ice. Right. Even though the phenomena both exist in both cultures, the relative frequency and familiarity is different, and the amount that you have to think about it. That was a very fluid way of putting it. <laughs> that yes. was great. Um, can't take, take that, me. Internet. You've got something good tonight. Yes. Uh, keep going. Um. Okay. Um, all right. So let's see. Um, and they discovered a man or the man sitting on a rock. Now um, I know this, his speedum was per- previously shaggy. Yep. But um, shaggy and deformed. But it also can be rough and deformed, and I'm wondering, is this referring to the man, or to the rock, or to both? Look at the it has to be Look the man because of the endings. Gender. Petrom hispidum. It would have to be hispidom if it were oh, okay. the petrom. Okay. Deform and ambiguous. Right. Okay. I'm going to deform him to just be ugly. Yeah. Right. True. So well, it's a shaggy, yes. a shaggy, ugly dude sitting on a rock. Right. Yeah, a lot, a lot of times in, in the medieval people, you know, ugly and deformed were kind of synonymous for, mm-hmm. for a lot of them. So. Yeah, but this guy's hairy too. Right. Yes. Um, he's been there a long time. Well, actually, technically, he hasn't. But. Um. Okay. Um, now, is this Undi or Undi? This is waves again. Okay. And the waves from uh, from every part um, at that time flowed or flowed forth from him. No, when when they flowed to when him. they flowed from him. Mm-hmm. Or, to no, him. Okay. Odd. What? Odd. Mm-hmm. They're flowing <laughs> to him. Oh, flowing to him. Okay. That makes more sense. Mm-hmm. Struck him even on the crown of the head. Yes. Good. And when they receded, he appeared on that back bare rock on which he sat the unhappy man. Now, the Illa Petra Nuda, I think, is the subject of a power a bot. Right. Right. So it's oh, so on right the bare rock, rock appeared? Okay. The yeah, bear. the rock appeared to be bare, right. On which that mis- that, that that wretched man was sitting. Right. Okay. That's a great example of Latin word order consciously setting you out to booby trap you, right? <laughs> they're doing it on they're doing it on purpose. I wasn't sure if it was appeared that bare rock or he appeared on that bare rock. Right. The only thing you could say, and it does work, <laughs> is that if it was on the bare rock, it probably should ha- it should have a preposition, right? Classical Latin certainly would have to be in illa petra. Yeah, in illa petra. Right. Yeah. But the other, but I'm sure you're right that you probably can find places where there isn't a preposition, and then illa petra nuda could perfectly well be ablative because we don't have long marks. But yeah, the, that's, but that's the confusing. nominative makes way better sense. Yeah, right? I was kind of like we'd really like some marks here. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Whether it's nominative or ablative. Right. It is always the way. Uh, we want long marks. Um, okay. Good. One more sentence. Uh, okay. One more sentence. Yes. Panum quoque qui ante ilum tendebat aliquando ventus minabat a se aliquando per cuciebat eum per oculos et frontem. How? Oh. <laughs> A certain scrap of clothing, which before him was hanging, 
um, at any time the wind was beating on him, at the same time was striking him on the eyes and forehead. Yes. That's extremely odd. It is odd, isn't it? Well, it's modern eyes, ears. So we can think about it's why it's explained. Um, and although one does, was that Mona? You you say ow. Ow. If you think about it, in all the great outrages of the Middle Ages, being hit on the head with a blanket is probably kind of low down. You know. But it, it, but it was it was wet, so it must have I'm snowed. Sure it hurt. I'm sure it smarted, but they're considering the other things they did to each other. <laughs> I'm less shocked. Um, all right, think, class, well done. In light of, since I might not be here next week, because I have that new class, um, I think it's kind of, this is very interesting, especially considering that a monk in the previous passes just got sent to hell by being pretty literally swallowed by lava. Yeah. Which is a very painful way to go. <laughs> it's um, fast. It's fast. Pyroclastic blast or not, um, that this is Judas... Being beat and, with the wet rag. Yeah. yeah, and that this is this is pre-purgatory, really. You either go to heaven or you go to hell. And Judas, you would certainly think, is going to hell. But this is one of the few cases um, in medieval thought that where somebody takes pity on Judas. That, you know, the, the scrap of cloth is actually um, a cloak that he once gave to a poor man. Yes, I'm spoilers, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, but that this is a mercy because he's normally in hell. And this one day out of it, he gets to sit in the freezing ocean. Right. Actually, on Sunday, there's a whole tradition of sinners being sort of not forgiven, but let out of hell, let out of their torment on Sundays as they're in a memorial to the resurrection. And yeah. that's why, yeah, no, no, not to give away too much, but yeah, that's why they're all they're coming carry them away. And so our six or possibly five viewers may never come back. Oh, come on. <laughs> we're scared of them. You want to hear more? But don't you want to hear more jokes? Okay, <laughs> there might be more jokes. All right. But uh, I, just, I just think it's really interesting that, you know, even Judas, there's possibility for salvation beyond death. Absolutely. You know, he's a traitor and a suicide. Yeah. Right. Yeah, don't, don't ever let anyone tell you the medievals were pessimists. Right. <laughs> Though they have to be pessimistic about. Um, sorry? I was just going to say, before we go, I have a question I wanted to ask, but you can say whatever you're going to say. I've, I'm done. Okay. And my question was just about my little emendation that I offered uh -huh. about otium instead of tidium. Uh -huh. um, that is, is there some way that if if I would like the suggestion to be actually considered by someone with more authority than me, mm -hmm. is there some way that I could get it put out there among actual Latinists that are, you know, not in high school like me? <laughs> I'm in high school. Right. I don't... Um... Bruce, do you have an answer to that? I mean, it, well, I think the, fir the first thing to do is to is to try to get mm -hmm. microfilms or images of the manuscript or manuscripts. Right, the many manuscripts. Yeah. Um, the I mean, but the but the 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 suggestion. I, mean, I think in practice, you could find out who the modern edit there. There is this edition of um, of the Navigatio coming out. In Italy, it, it's supposed to be out, but it's not out yet. And this, what this, uh, unfortunately, this, the this the other there was an Austrian edition coming out, but the lady died. Uh, the Italian guy died too, and has been cut. So it's there were these supposedly these new editions of of um, the Navigatio coming out, and so one way to get it out there, Jamie, would just be to, if you could find them, is, is to write them, but I, I don't know that, I'm not, I'm not in contact with them, Karen might be. Um, one answer is to tell Karen Ruff, but, and so if she watches the broadcast. Um, you know, I, I certainly intend, you know, this thing will come, the thing I'm doing, there's a draft uh, that I submitted to Oxford, the revised thing will be submitted to Oxford, and we can do, you know, if you're in 
you're producing a text, you can do anything you want. You can say, you can write a note and say, this is a suggestion of J.K. Wheeler that makes mm -hmm. perfect sense to us. It would have, unless we get a proper manuscript guy person helping, it's not going to be a, I don't know how what it would take to be a scholarly to be really taken seriously in the scholarly community. I'm not sure how much anybody cares, but it, and it may be that it may be that OTM is exactly what John O'Meara thought the text was when he translated it. Space of time, right? Mm -hmm. uh, he should. He says he's using Selmer, but he may just say, "Oh, don't be silly. That's clearly OTM." Mm -hmm. but it's but his translation isn't doesn't have notes or annotations, so it may be... Right. You may, one thing, Jamie, you may discover in life is your most brilliant suggestions have been anticipated by somebody else. In That's your, happened to me with some regularity. In our <laughs> field, it happens all the time. There's just... It's, it's re, the best you can ever do is hope that something brilliant that you've thought hasn't been said lately, you know, mm -hmm. or enough, yeah. or well it's enough. It's always an encouragement to me when I find that I've thought of something that's already been thought of because it shows me that I'm thinking the way that smart people who get published are thinking. Right, right. right. The trouble is one likes, one also mm -hmm. wants the glory. Um, at least I do. Uh, and how many actually, manuscripts of Brendan? There are like over 100 manuscripts, right? right. It's a hugely difficult manuscript tradition, and s people were very excited when Selmer's edition came out. 50 years ago, but now they're very unhappy with it, and they've been unhappy with it for a long time. So um, this group, uh, you know, needs new research, and um, you know, well, just... a lot of it's being done. And as I say, this edition, um, there was this brilliant guy, supposedly, I mean, supposedly brilliant guy called Orlandi, who had an edition that was provisional, and then the final version has supposedly been published in Italy this year, but it has, it's not, it's alluded to, but not. At not available in any store, so mm -hmm. I don't know where that is. Um, but all you can do is lay claim to your ideas. Your 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 idea, J Jamie, is is on YouTube and will always be on YouTube. Hello. So if some smarty pants German comes along and says that's I right, have an idea, we will be able to say it was anticipated on August 18th by J.K. Wheeler. Interesting. Well, I'll I'll be interested to look 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 it up some. Look at some right. of the other editions. There's also a journal called Notes and Queries. I think it's just yes. sort of inter you know yeah, interdisciplinary right. for like but, random random thoughts. Yeah. But I, yeah. I, don't, I don't think just a random thought about one word in in the Navigatio would interest them. You could try it. You know. No, no, I, no. I, ideally, you want to build a whole case around it. And you want to. It, and in a perfect world, Jamie, not only would your insight be right about the text, but it would make a serious difference in some way, either to the passage or the text as a whole. Right? right. That would be really great, right, in a mm -hmm. scholarly sense, where, where not only have you fixed a particular problem, but that matters. And mm -hmm. my experience with scholars with scholarly journals nowadays is if you're just fixing a problem, they don't want to know. Save it for your edition. Save it for a book review. Yeah. But but you have to have a you have to ha you have to use. I, I mean, it's a great peg to hang an interpretation on if it if you can. It's great to have a specific suggestion along with a broader interpretation. But the best thing to do with the, I mean, one thing to do is you know you've got you've already got it out there. Um, that's really all I've got. If if I were in contact with this Italian lady, I'd that who's the one who's doing Orlandi's text, I would write her and say, "What do you think?" But I'm not going to do that. It's you probably as it you, is. I I think I might contact Karen Ruff if I look it up and find it hasn't yeah. been anticipated or right. instinctively ruled out. Right. Right. Ask Karen. That's good. Good yeah, idea. Good. But thank you yeah. all so much. All right, thank you guys. Uh, next week we're going to try and finish, which will mean getting through a fair amount of text, maybe more than we can really do. But if worse comes to worse, Bruce and I can just jump in and translate, and get it done, and get it done. It's a, it's a bit more than we've been doing, um, and people are obviously flagging 
Um, we'll just have to be pretty disciplined. We'll just have to translate Latin and right. keep going. And not talk yeah. about things. Well, and tell only uh, really good jokes or <laughs> tell... William, well, you have the ability to start half an hour earlier? To get started, to get started through? like 7.30. I'm just asking because it's our first teacher day is Monday and our first student day is Tuesday, so it's like a terrible day for me. Oh. You know, but uh, I don't want to risk the end. So that I was just thinking if we're going to run. That, that's, that's actually not, mm -hmm. that's not a bad idea. I could do it. I could do it. We have very many people left over from you mm -hmm. non sort of US time okay. zone. Um, I'm not. I, my class is supposed to go until 8.50, as I said, but right. um, I'll see if I can get out early. Yeah, okay. Um, well, I guess it's starting, you'd rather start early than stay late, in other words, is what you're saying, because you've got to get up in the morning, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, well, I we can do that. Why not? I mean... That works. If you, okay. So let's do that. And if people miss, they miss, but it's all, it's they all. Be on, yeah. and, if people have to show up half an hour late, they can do that. And by yeah. people, we're talking small numbers of people. So life goes on. All right? You've all right. been very quiet on that, on a, but now he's gone anyway. Um, all right. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Take care. Good night. Good night, all. Thank you. Thanks again.